from St. Paul's Baptist Church. Here's the scoop. The doors of our church are open. We invite you to join us for worship each weekend at 9 a.m. at St. Paul's North, at 10 a.m. online, or at 11.30 a.m. at St. Paul's South. Please review the updated reopening strategy on our website at myspbc.org or by scanning the QR code for details on attending in-person worship. To join us online, download our mobile app or join us at myspbc.tv, Facebook, YouTube, Roku TV, and Apple TV. To join us by phone, call 855-905-7023. To subscribe, please press number one when prompted, and you'll receive a call each week when worship and Bible study goes live. Sunday School for Imagination Children and SMB students is now open at St. Paul's North. Students can find a Sunday School group by visiting myspbc.org or by scanning the QR code on the screen. Calling all artists, including visual, graphic, sculptor, etc. We're celebrating black art through the month of February. If you'd like to share your work, please email outreach at myspbc.org by Tuesday, January 31st. Spaces are limited. Romans 8 explodes with the amazing truth that in Christ there is no condemnation and ends with the amazing promise that there is no way that we can be separated from Him. We are free, not just from the bondage of sin, but free to live in the power of the Spirit. We have been adopted into God's family as co-heirs of the kingdom. In Christ, we are more than conquerors. Join us during this Lenten season as our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson, shows us what it means to be more than a conqueror in Christ. This Bridge Bible Study series begins February 23rd. Sometimes the pressure we're under is just too much. Other people's expectations for us, not to mention our own, build up to a point where we just can't deal. So what happens? We shut down, we withdraw, or we might self-sabotage to take control of the inevitable disappointment we see lurking just around the corner. Join our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson, as he encourages us to take a step back this year from the pressure cooker lives we often live and look ahead to a year filled with love, hope, joy, and peace instead. During the month of February, we'll celebrate with a special theme each Sunday as we invite you to participate in person or online. February 12th is Negro Spiritual Sunday, Come Dressed in All Black. February 19th is Songs from the Movement Sunday, Let's See Your Sunday Best. February 26th is Contemporary Gospel Sunday, the attire is Jewels and Jerseys. Our theme for 2023 is every member in a group, every group on a mission. This month, we're celebrating walking your way to a healthier lifestyle and encouraging all groups to participate. If you're not part of a group, we invite you to join a small group at myspbc.info slash find a group. There are just three easy steps. One, join a group. Two, count your steps for one week. And three, submit your total count to your group leader. Groups with the highest total step count and the highest average step count will win a prize. To wrap up the event, come get your steps immediately following Sunday service on February 26th. Bring your walking shoes for this 30-minute walk or get your steps in wherever you are. Walk around campus at St. Paul's North or South, at a park, or in your neighborhood, at a school or mall, or around your home. Okay, let's have a real talk about blood pressure. Do you monitor yours regularly? It's something everyone with high blood pressure should do, but it's something most people don't know how to do correctly. Checking your blood pressure regularly will help let you know if you have it under control. It will also help you start to understand which factors are putting you at higher risk for stroke and heart attack. Before I get to that though, I just wanna stress one thing. 
If you have high blood pressure, you should talk to your doctor to figure out how frequently you should be checking it at home. For most people, taking your blood pressure twice in the morning and twice in the evening, even just for a week, will help you and your doctor get a better understanding of your blood pressure. For morning readings, it's best to take those before you take your blood pressure medication. It's also very important to avoid exercise, caffeine, or tobacco at least 30 minutes prior to testing, since those can affect your levels. Now, let's move on to talk about the proper way to measure your blood pressure at home. Nearly half adults in the U.S. have high blood pressure and are at high risk for stroke and heart attack. So self-measuring is one of the easiest ways to be proactive about our health. Here I have my blood pressure monitoring device. It's easy to use and it helps me get an accurate reading. Be sure to get an automated device with the upper arm cuff. That's the type doctors recommend. The first thing you want to do is find a quiet place to sit where your back is in an upright, stable position. A dining room chair is great. You want to make sure the chair isn't too soft so your body is fully supported. Sit with your feet flat on the floor and don't cross your legs or ankles. If you need to use the bathroom, make sure you go before you do your reading. Next, rest your arm on a flat surface with your palm facing up. Place the blood pressure cuff on your bare upper arm just above your elbow. Your arm should be relaxed and resting so the cuff is at the same height as your heart. Now rest quietly for five minutes before taking the first measurement. Avoid talking while taking your blood pressure measurement. Once your first measurement is completed, write down the blood pressure numbers and pulse that are displayed on the device. Wait one minute and then repeat this process again. As you just saw, it's important to check your two measurements at around the same time each morning and evening. At your next doctor's visit, be sure to share your blood pressure numbers so you can discuss the numbers and so your care plan can be changed if necessary. That's it. Not bad, right? Measuring your blood pressure at home is easy to do and a great way to stay on top of your health. If you have more questions about managing or measuring your blood pressure overall, visit the website. Thank you for your time and attention. This has been The Scoop. How you doing? I am Reverend Juan Shackleford, or Rev Shack, as they call me around here at St. Paul's Baptist Church. And I'm the Dream Chaser Life Stage Pastor. We are currently looking for some leaders. Maybe we can help you as well to build your resume and your skill set. Uh, by leading some of the groups that we have available under the Dream Chasers Life Stage. That would be outreach, volunteer, um, worship, and groups. Uh, these are perfect places to come and build your skill set, to put some things on your resume, to help you develop and to help us grow. So let us know if you want to do that, if you are interested in doing that, and we will be excited to get you to be a part of the team. Um, God bless you, and you have a wonderful day.
Good morning and welcome to this first Sunday of Black History Month. We celebrate our culture and continue to make history against all odds. Please make sure that you are checking our SPBC social media pages for everything that we're doing this month. This Sunday is traditional gospel and wearing our African garb. Our scripture today comes from Isaiah 55, one through three. Here, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which does not bread and your earnings for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David, the word of God for the people of God. All praise be to God. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this time and this space to worship with you with our whole heart. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your unfailing love. We thank you for your protection from those things seen and unseen. We thank you for this house called St. Paul's, where we are fed the word that pushes us to grow, where we love each other in your spirit and give each other grace in those trying times. God, continue to guide our thoughts. We have been tested in these times, but we know that you carry us in our weakest moments. We know that you never leave us or forsake us. God, when we can't hear you or feel your presence, send a word, send a song, send a call, send a text, something that lets us know that indeed you are still there and hear our cries. God, we lean on you for our comfort. We receive your warmth when we are grieving. Plant us right now. Focus us into what your mighty servant will bring. Continue to protect him and his family as they continue to flow in your will. Continue to cover this church. Let your spirit flow to everyone who is watching on this stream right now. We receive peace right now. We receive renewal right now. We receive joy right now. We, re we receive strength right now. We reclaim our hope and we receive you in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Good morning, SPBC everywhere and welcome to service. I am Reverend Juan Shackelford, and I'm the proud life stage pastor of those 20-somethings dream chasers, those dynamic dream chasers. I pray that you are able to see where God has blessed you and continue to carry that throughout your year. We know that God can do anything and above all, everything that we can ask for and imagine. We welcome you to the St. Paul's Everywhere where we experience and exist to empower people to grow into the persons God created them to be. Out of all the places and pages that you could have gone to, you stopped here and we are happy about it. There are numerous ways that you can engage with us right now. If you are brand new, you can text the word new to the number on your screen and let us welcome you properly. That number is 804-643-4769. If you're on social media, greet the person in front of you and behind you in the chat space with a great big good morning, grand rising, hey, how you doing? Hope all is well, hope you are blessed. However you wanna welcome, make them feel welcome in coming into service. If you're watching at home on your device, invite people in in your family that's in your home to watch with you. If nobody's with you, call somebody, share it, let them know that Worship is going on right now and you want to share in that experience with them. If you like something, hit the like button. If you think something that you are having feeling the music is going and the dance is going or the word that pastor is giving to you is touching your heart, use an emoji, 
Use the like buttons, use the heart buttons. Give a great big amen, hallelujah, I-K-T-R, anything in the chat to let us know that you are serving and being there present with us. The main point is we want to worship with you and not for you. So that's, let's get ready to receive this word. Let's get excited and let's do it right now. Hi, I'm Dr. Monroe Harris, president of the board of the Black History Museum and Cultural Center of Virginia. It certainly would be my pleasure to be there with you today, but as we live in an era of digital content, I'm happy to know that my virtual greeting is acceptable, and I look forward to meeting you sometime very soon. That said, thank you for visiting the Black History Museum and Cultural Center of Virginia. Our mission is to provide, develop, and partner in the creation of educational resources, services, and opportunities to promote and advance understanding of the history and culture of Black people and African Americans here in the Commonwealth. 2021 marked 40 years of doing just that. Through our exhibitions, educational programs, cultural events, and community engagement, the museum has served as the primary source for Virginia's black history. We are beginning the next 40 years of our journey by taking our assets outside of these four walls and meeting the challenge of fulfilling our mission within the confines of our physical footprint by actively seeking opportunities for place-based initiatives to present black history as part of our overall shared history. We are building relationships and partnerships with mission aligned organizations so that our collaborative efforts will provide greater access to Virginia's black history that has, in many cases, been pivotal to our history in the world's inclusive history. We are in a unique position of having relevant content such as artifacts, art, historically significant documents and images that can be utilized to provide services within our current facility, as well as through virtual and augmented reality activities, portable programming, and a mobile museum, all for the sole purpose of promoting and advancing the understanding of the history and culture of Virginia's Black people. The educational opportunities we will offer for school children and youth will be valuable additions to the classroom curriculum. A virtual reality experience and other enhancements to our permanent collection are part of our growth plan. This work will inform how we make our services accessible to students across the Commonwealth. There is so much more that I can share with you about the museum and what lies ahead for us. It is my hope that you will be encouraged enough from this brief message to become a member if you're not already a member. And if you are a member, please make good use of your membership. Thank you for your presence here today. And again, welcome.
this first Sunday of Black History Month, I want to encourage all of you to discover Black history this month. Take the time to read about it, learn about it, listen to a podcast so that you might discover this significant part of our national and global history, the history of African Americans, particularly in the Americas. Your life will never be the same. And we're beginning today a series of messages, a new series entitled Under Pressure. Everybody say that with me, say Under Pressure. Now, most of us know what it is to live under pressure. Many of us can testify that sometimes the pressure we're under is just too much. Other people's expectations for us, not to mention our own, build up to a point where we just can't Deal. So what happens? We shut down, we break down, we back down, we withdraw, or at times we might self-sabotage to take control of the inevitable disappointment we see lurking just around the corner. Now, if I'm barking up your tree or stirring your Kool-Aid or ringing your doorbell or pinging your profile, God has a word in this series for you. You can learn to survive and even thrive in the pressure, through the pressure, when you're under the pressure. So travel with me now to the textual territory that is 2 Chronicles chapter 32. I'd like to read in your hearing verses 27 through 30 and tag this text with the title, Under Pressure to Succeed. Under Pressure to Succeed. Listen for a word from God. Hezekiah was very wealthy and highly honored. He built special treasury buildings for his silver, gold, precious stones and spices and for his shields and other valuable items. He also constructed many storehouses for his grain, new wine and olive oil. And he made many stalls for his cattle and pens for his flocks of sheep and goats. He built many towns and acquired vast flocks and herds, for God had given him great wealth. He blocked up the upper spring of Gihon and brought the water down through a tunnel to the west side of the city of David. And so he succeeded in everything he did. How did he do it? How in the world could Hezekiah succeed in everything he did? I mean, how is it possible? How do you defeat your enemies? How do you develop your country, defend the weak, and destroy idolatry? How do you decrease poverty and defy the odds that are against you? This is Hezekiah, who you remember was sick to the point of death. Hezekiah, who prayed and God added 15 years to his life. So how do you succeed in everything. How do we do it even today, brothers and sisters? How in the world can we stop the headlines of hopelessness, suicide, brutality, and death? How do we protect our children? How do we grow our businesses? How do we raise our families? How do we improve our marriages? How do we do our jobs? How do we have successful churches? How do we heal the city, the nation, and the world? How? That's what I want to ask today. How is it possible? When you look at that word, how the same letters form other words if you scramble them, because how can become who. Did you get that? The who is tied up in the how. So when we look at Hezekiah and ask how, immediately we are pointed to the who, why. Because to be successful takes real teamwork and the right techniques. Let me say that again. To be successful takes real teamwork and the right techniques. 
teamwork and techniques go together. You can have the right techniques, but if you don't have real teamwork, you won't succeed. And similarly, you can have the right team, but if you're not employing the right techniques, you will still fall short. But Hezekiah shows us that the formula for success is real teamwork married to right technique. How did he succeed in everything he did? Can I break it down like a fraction? He had the right techniques. Now, what are the right techniques? I'm so glad you asked. You got to start with collaboration. Everybody everywhere say it out loud, collaboration. Now type it in the chat space, collaboration. Don't chase the dream alone. Don't face your challenges and your problems alone. Collaborate. In chapter 32, Hezekiah has to face and fight enemies, King Sennacherib and the armies of Assyria. When Hezekiah ascended to the throne, Judah was a vassal kingdom. They were literally servants or puppets required to pay tribute to Assyria in exchange for protection and for not being attacked. But when Hezekiah determined that he would pay no more money to Assyria, Sennacherib decided to attack him and take what he believed was rightfully his. He attacked Judah, defeated them, and then turned his sights towards Jerusalem. Here's what happened. It's in verse 3 of our text. Hezekiah consulted with his own officials and military advisors, and they decided to stop the flow of springs outside the city. Do you see what Hezekiah did? He was wise enough to know it takes collaboration, that when you are facing a problem, when you are facing a storm, when you are facing an enemy, when you are facing an obstacle, don't go it alone. It takes a team. Well, what does collaboration look like? Boy, you asking the right questions today. It's the ask, A-S-K, that you make of others to participate in a process that addresses a problem or a possibility. Hezekiah had the humility to know what he didn't know, and he understood that if we want to defeat our enemies, I'm not going to be able to do it all by myself. I need the right team with the right techniques. I don't have all the answers. And so he invited the military advisors and strategists. Get people at your table who know what you don't know. You ought to write that down. I'll say it again. Get people at your table who know what you don't know. His goal was to create and collaborate on a plan to prevent their enemies from defeating and destroying them. And collaboration includes the ask of others, ASK, but also includes the advice of others. Because get this, it's one thing to ask, but it's something else to adhere to what others say. What I love about Hezekiah is that he did not surround himself with yes people, but he was wise enough and sagacious enough to surround himself with people who could give him a variety of options and opinions. In essence, they said, look, King, one of the strategies, one of the tactics that you can employ is to stop up the spring so that when the army arrives, they won't find water readily available all around us. This was not the only option offered. They had others. Why? How did they get there? Collaboration. Hezekiah made the ask of others and received the advice of others. Can I go a little further? Because collaboration entails the ask of others, the advice of others, but also the asset of others. As we collaborate, we realize at a deep and existential level that we don't have to go it alone, but there are others who can do this with me. And because of that, burdens are a little bit lighter and days are a little bit brighter. I don't have to bear this load all by myself. The breakthrough can come quicker. The debt can be paid faster. The blessings are more enjoyable. The battles are even easier because we are able to collaborate. Teamwork, you've heard it said, 
makes the dream work. So here's what Hezekiah's example has taught us already. When you are under pressure to succeed, collaborate. Could I get 40 of you to type it again in the chat space? Collaborate. That means you ask others who are smarter than you. Wait, what? Wait a minute. Did I say somebody was smarter than you? Yes, somebody is smarter. Listen to me closely. If you're the smartest person in the room, you in the wrong room. If you are the smartest person in your group, you need to expand your group. You need people in your life who know more than you do. You need to include some people in your circle, in your crew, in your clique, who have more sense, more maturity, more experience, more education than you do. You need some people in your clique who are already rich, already smart, already disciplined, already where you are attempting to go. It's Proverbs 13, 20 that says, walk with the wise and you will become wise. Associate with fools and you'll end up in trouble. So if we want to be successful, we need advisors around us. That's the team that will give us honest, accurate advice. The technique, develop practical strategies that will work in our situation and revolve our issues advisors and strategies, right team, right techniques. As iron sharpens iron, so does one person sharpen another. We need collaboration, but not only collaboration. Here's a second technique. You need cooperation. Everybody type in the chat space, cooperation. Listen to what I'm about to say. If we don't all row, the boat won't go. Somebody ought to type that. I'll say it again. If we don't all row, the boat won't go. Cooperate. Verse 4, they organized a huge work crew to stop the flow of the springs, cutting off the brook that ran through the fields. They came up with a plan, but it's not enough just to create plans. You've got to complete plans. The best plans require execution. All talk and no action is just the talk show. Amen. If you don't mind, can I drop a quarter in the meter right there? Because what's weakening our country and our communities today is that it is full and we are full of talk shows with no action. Proverbs 11, 11 says, upright citizens are good for a city and make it prosper but the talk of the wicked tears it apart. We can talk about the problems all day long, but when there's talk and no action, our babies continue to die, our elders continue to suffer, our schools continue to struggle, our marriages will continue to fall apart when there is talk and no action. We need cooperation. Henry Ford once said, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. Cooperation requires a multitude of workers. Everybody say multitude. Cooperation requires a multitude of workers to make it happen. Because chapter 32, Verse 2 points out they recruited a huge work crew. It takes a multitude of workers. And that is why St. Paul's, we have never been, nor are we now, in competition with any other church. Did you hear me right there? Hear me well. We are not in conflict with any other church. We need strong churches in Richmond, Henrico, Chesterfield, Hanover, and New Kent. We need strong churches in Petersburg, Northside, and Southside. As a matter of fact, we need strong Baptist churches, Methodist churches, Apostolic, Pentecostal, Kojic, non-denominational, and Presbyterian churches. Why? Because it's going to take a multitude of workers to change things for the better. 
one of the residual blessings that came out of this time of pandemic in our city is pastors working together on health issues, on justice issues, pastors working together to feed people, support people, help people, and support our schools and our students. And I need every one of you listening to me to be praying about that, that it continues right now, because if we can make a difference in the life of one child or impact even one family for the good, that will be an incredible victory for the kingdom of God. Now, that may not seem like much, but if St. Paul's is making a difference and other churches are making a difference, can you imagine the impact on our community? It takes a multitude of workers, but it also takes the muscles of workers stay in scripture because not only do they go to work and stop up the springs, but in verse five, the text testifies how hard he worked. Listen, then Hezekiah worked hard. Everybody say hard at repairing all the broken sections of the wall, erecting towers and constructing a second wall outside the first. He also reinforced the supporting terraces in the city of David and manufactured large numbers of weapons and shields. This is the gospel according to Rick Ross. Every single day I keep hustling, hustling. Y'all don't know the song. Hezekiah is hustling. He is working hard. Whoever said success is easy? Who said success does not require sweat, struggle, and effort? I need you to know that with the vision we have, with the mission we have, with the assignment that belongs to us as a faith community, it's going to take some hard work. It's going to take us rolling up our sleeves, dismissing our excuses and making the investment. Act like you cool Modi from back in the day and just type in the chat space, I go to work because not only does it require a multitude of workers, but it requires the muscles of the workers. And notice, they did it all. Come here. Not only did they stop up the springs, not only did they build up the weak areas, not only did they manufacture ammunition and weapons, but they did everything that needed to be done. It takes the muscles of the workers. It takes a multitude of workers, but it also takes the minds of the workers. Listen to me, because the adversary would love to tire us out and have us spend our energy on dumb stuff. Conversations that don't count, engagements that are inconsequential, distractions, disagreements, detours, and diversions. As a matter of fact, if the devil can tire us out, he'll try to stress us out. And the favorite tool that he deploys to do that is negative conversation designed to discourage us. I'm still in the Bible. Second Chronicles 32, Sennacherib wrote a letter to the workers to say to them, what you're doing is not going to help. Nothing is going to change. I am Sennacherib and no God can stop me. What's happening? He was trying to get in their ear, get in their head, get in their mind to discourage them. But watch what Hezekiah does in verse 7. He brought the people together and said to them, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria or his mighty army, for there is a power far greater on our side. A hallelujah goes right there. He may have a great honor, but they are merely men. He, we have the Lord our God to help us and fight our battles for us. And Hezekiah's words greatly encourage the people. It takes the minds of the workers. Why? Why is corporate worship important, whether on site or on screen? Why is it critical that we get together virtually and in person and come together? We do that so we can be encouraged. 
so we can get the word of God alongside the people of God and then go forth and do the work of God. And I wonder how many of you can testify that when your tank was low, when your spirit was empty, when you were ready to throw up the deuces and walk away, you need some encouragement. You needed some encouragement. Sometimes you need to be reminded that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Sometimes you need to be reminded that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Yes, the devil is busy, but God is still great. God is still God. God is still good, and God is still on the throne. We've got God on our side. Have I got a witness? We've got God fighting our battles. Is there an amen? We've got God protecting us. We've got God providing for us. And sometimes we need our minds encouraged. Cooperation reminds us that we cannot do it by ourselves. So we work with others who are stronger and smarter than we are. We work together for the common good. We've got to learn to come together and put things into practice. The who hard workers, the how, practical and proven actions that rebuild the weak, arm the good, and construct protective measures. We've got to have collaboration. We've got to have cooperation. But also, thirdly, there must be calculation. Somebody type it in the chat space right now. Calculation. Jesus said, if any of you wanted to build a tower, wouldn't he first sit down and work out the cost of it to see if he can afford to finish it? When was the last time you took account, my friend, of what it is that you have? When was the last time you took account of what really counts, of who I can count on, of how much I can count? I wonder, is there anybody listening to me who has been busy doing some calculation? Because look at what happened in the text. Hezekiah has collaboration, ideas from others. Hezekiah has cooperation, working with others to make something significant happen. But his opposition is big. His opposition is bad. His opposition is bold. There were 185,000 soldiers surrounding the city. That's like having half of the entire city of Richmond lined up against you. Sennacherib sent word to Hezekiah and said, just as the gods of all the other nations failed to rescue their people from my power, so the God of Hezekiah will fail as well. The Assyrian officials who brought the letter shouted this in Hebrew to the people gathered on the walls of the city, trying to terrorize them and terrify them so that it would become easier to capture the city. These officers talked about the God of Jerusalem as though he were one of the pagan gods made by human hands. And the Bible says, when Hezekiah added everything up, guess what he discovered? He was still coming up short. I could preach right there. So what did he do? It's in verse 20. It says, then King Hezekiah, and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, cried out to God in prayer. That is calculation. First, notice how it breaks down. They tried everything. Could I get 91 of you to type everything? They stopped up the springs. They added another wall. They rebuilt the weak areas. They built ammunition and weapons. They tried everything. And that's a model for us to mimic. We need to do everything in our power to create opportunity and community. Do you want to be successful in your life? Try everything. Go to school, learn a trade, try everything. You want to be healthy? Try everything. Take your shots, take your vitamins, get some exercise, eat fewer processed foods, get some sleep. You want your mind to be stronger? Try everything. Go to a therapist. Go to counseling. Take some medication. You want to improve your relationship? Apologize. Compromise. Uh, 
improvise. You want to grow your business, serve your customers, study your market, change your product, build support, market what you have. You want to nurture your kids, talk to them, listen to them, love on them, support them. You want to improve your finances, save some, give some, invest some, grow some, keep some. They tried everything. That's first, but they kept coming up short. What do you try after you've tried everything? Here it is. Try God. They tried everything. That didn't work. So they talked to God. They engaged in calculation. They came up short. And the truth is the divine has designed the journey of our lives so that at some point in some way, we will all come up short to remind us, my friends, that we need the Lord. That's why we've got to pray, because we need the Lord. And when they prayed, God answered. Can I remind you that we serve a prayer answering God. The Bible says that men should always pray and never faint. The Bible says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. We've got to pray. I need 46 of you to type in all capital letters, pray, P-R-A-Y, pray for God is your refuge and your strength a very present help in trouble. Pray, God will never leave you nor forsake you. Pray, a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Pray, because he that has begun this good work in you is able to complete it, and he will. Pray, my friend, because they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, mount up on wings like eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not think. You've got to pray. Talk to God. When your heart is overwhelmed, pray, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Talk to God in the morning. Talk to God at noonday. Talk to God at midnight. Talk to God at work. Talk to God on your way to work. Talk to God leaving work. Talk to God when you get home. Talk to God as you go about your activities. When the doctors can do no more, talk to God. Say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. How many of you know that just a little talk with Jesus will make it all right. That's why we talk to God. That's why we created as a church 714 every Wednesday morning to give us a weekly time to come together as a congregation through technology and pray together no matter where we are. Why? Because there's power in talking to God. They tried everything. Everything didn't work. So they talked to God. Why did they do that? Because they trusted God's power. Verse 21 says, the Lord sent an angel. There's a shout right there. The Lord sent an angel. There's a hallelujah right there. The Lord sent an angel. The Lord didn't even have to come himself. The Lord sent an angel who destroyed the entire Assyrian army and Sennacherib was forced to return home in disgrace. When he entered the temple of his god, little g, he was assassinated by his own sons. The Hebrews trusted the power of God. Now, Chronicles doesn't give the numbers, but if you read the parallel account of this incident in the book of Kings, it points out that one angel took out 185,000 Assyrians. They trusted God's power. And can I tell you something? If one angel can take care of 185,000 Assyrians, don't you know that God has enough angels to take care of your haters, your critics, your problems, your troubles, your obstacles? God has enough angels to watch over you no matter how your co-workers conspire or what your enemies say or what your adversaries plan. God can still give you joy and sorrow, hope for tomorrow. They trusted 
and the power of God. I'm praying right now for some people who believe in the power of prayer, for some people called to intercede on behalf of others. We have built it into the organizational design of every life stage in our church that there should be in our care groups intercessors, people who will lean into the fact that God may not come when you want him, but he'll always be on time. People who will lean into the fact that nothing is impossible for those that believe because nothing is impossible with God. How do you succeed under pressure? You need collaboration. You need cooperation. You need calculation. But fourthly and finally, there's got to be concentration. Can I show you? Hezekiah succeeded in everything he tried to do, but he failed to manage his success. Tiptoe on over to 2 Kings 20 to see what I'm talking about. And let me set this up. Hezekiah succeeded in everything that he did. And did you catch what he did? He had built storehouses just to house his gold, his silver, and his spices. He had built barns to cover all the horses and pigs and goats and sheep he had because God had given him wealth. When he got sick, God added 15 years to his life. And yet, when an envoy, when an entourage came from Babylon to tour and view all that God had done in his life, in his reign, and in his circumstance, the text intones that God withdrew himself from Hezekiah to test him. Why? to see what was in his heart. And listen to me close. The test of success is always the same. When you succeed, when you overcome, when you win, when you get your breakthrough, when you pay off your mortgage, when you pay off your student loan, when you end your business year in the black, when you watch your children prosper, when you feel happy, when you can go on vacation, when you are strong and vibrant, the test is this, to whom and to what will you give the credit? Did you get that? To whom and to what will you give the credit? That's the test of success. It's in chapter 32, verse 31, because when they begin to ask this entourage, this envoy, they begin to ask Hezekiah about all the amazing things that had transpired. Instead of Hezekiah giving God the glory, the honor, and the credit, and the praise, Hezekiah took the credit, the honor, the glory, and the praise for himself. He lost his concentration. The secret of all achievement is concentration. He began to say, look at what I have done. Look at what I have built. Look at what I have acquired. Look at what I have achieved. This is so important, my friends. Before you succeed, you got to fix your focus. Could I get 433 of you to flood the chat space and just type those three words, fix your focus. If you want to be able to keep all you've gained, if you want to be able to enjoy all you've acquired and achieved, you've got to Fix your focus. That means concentrate. Concentrate on what? I'm glad you asked. I won't keep you long. You've got to focus on your weaknesses. Don't get it twisted. All of us have weaknesses. You cannot see what you cannot see. All of us have weaknesses, and therefore, all of us need an annual game plan for growth. Did you hear what I said? What's your growth plan for this year? Because if you fail to plan, it's because you plan to fail. What is your growth plan for this year? What will you read? Where will you go? What will you give? Who will you help? What do you need to change in order to become a better person, in order to live a better life? Don't shoot yourself in the foot. Don't cut off your nose despite your own face. Stevie Wonder sang it years ago. He sang everyone has got a certain weakness in life. Y'all don't know that song either, do you? Success makes you susceptible. Visibility makes you vulnerable. To what, preacher? I'm glad you asked. 
arrogance. Proverbs 13.10 says, arrogance causes nothing but trouble. It is wiser to ask for advice because you are no better than anybody else. You are no worse than anybody else. You have to inhale and exhale like everybody else. You have to eat and sleep like everybody else. You make mistakes and miscalculations and missteps like everybody else. Don't live out of your weakness Focus so that you can live above your weakness. I'm saying something. What is your game plan for growth? Here's an excerpt from mine this year. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Make me, mold me, fill me, use me. I don't know about you, but I need the Holy Spirit operative in my life on a daily basis, not just the weekend, but on a daily basis. I sing and I speak and I pray, sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with me, filling me with your love. You've got to focus on your weakness by developing an annual growth plan, but also focus on the future, not just your weakness, but focus on the future. There is no success without successors. You've heard it. What's going to happen, friend, when you're gone? Can your family survive without you? Do you have life insurance or are you waiting for a GoFundMe page? Have you written a will? Have you established a trust? I'm in the Bible. It's Proverbs 13, 22. A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. What happens to your business when you're gone? What happens to the church when you're gone? You need to focus on the future. What happens to our community when we are gone? What happens to the neighborhood when you're gone? We've got to pour right now into the next generation. Tell them what you know. Show them where you've been. Don't be afraid to let them know. I haven't been right my whole life because you haven't and neither have I. All of us have made some mistakes. All of us have made some bad choices. All of us have wandered away. All of us have gone astray. But aren't you glad that you are where you are today because somebody prayed for you, took some time with you, came to see about you, took you by the hand, took you under their wings. You got to do that now for somebody else. Pour into the next generation right now. Give them a chance to lead right now. Invite them to participate right now. Mentor them, coach them, listen to them right now. You need to focus on the future. And that means you got to put some things in play right now. Everybody everywhere say right now. How do we succeed under pressure? You need collaboration. That means real teamwork and the right techniques. You need cooperation from a multitude of workers using the muscles of the workers and the minds of the workers. We need to do calculation and try everything. When that doesn't work, talk to God and trust God's power. And there must be concentration where we focus on our weaknesses, but also focus on the future. Do you really believe, Pastor, that we can change things? Absolutely yes, because our God is an awesome God because nothing is too hard for God. Our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask, think, or imagine. How do you know, preacher? Because he did it for Jesus. Jesus succeeded even under pressure. He had collaboration between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He had cooperation with the mind of God, the might of God, through a multitude of workers. He had calculation. He, they tried Noah, but Noah had a drinking problem. Heaven tried Abraham, but he was a liar. They tried Jacob, but he was a gangster. They tried Moses, but he couldn't control his temper. They tried Gideon, but he was too nervous. They tried Samson, but he was out of control. And so I heard Jesus talking to his father saying, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He trusted in the power of God and he stayed focused. 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. And they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head and for me he died. But that's not how this story ends. Three days later, he rose, he rose, he rose again with all power in his hand. And God gave him a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. And I just want to testify that there's power in the name of Jesus, wonder working power. There's love in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. There's joy in the name of Jesus. God gave him success in everything he did. And it is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others, he'll do for you. If it was a secret, then I wouldn't know he'll fight your battles. If it was a secret, then I wouldn't know he'll hold your hand. If it was a secret, then I wouldn't know he'll come and see about you if it was a secret then I wouldn't know that he'll take care of you but it is no secret what God can do what he's done for others he'll do for you won't he do it somebody say yeah you can succeed even under pressure hallelujah and amen. And this is my invitation to you, my brother and my sister. I want you to succeed in life. And so does heaven. God never meant for you to fail. God uses failure to teach us. But God's desire is that you will succeed. But you can't do it by yourself. You're going to need collaboration. You're going to need cooperation. You're going to have to make some calculations and then fix your concentration. What should I concentrate on? Let's start with your relationship with God. Do you have a personal relationship with God? I'm not asking about your religion or your rituals. Do you have a personal relationship with God? Well, preacher, how could I have one? It's as simple as A, B, C, D. It's simple as the alphabet. A, just admit to yourself that you need God, that you've tried some of everything, and everything has not worked. Nothing has filled the hole in your soul. It was Augustine who said, there's a hole in the soul of humans made in the shape of God, and only God can fill it. Admit that to yourself. But then believe that God sent Jesus Christ into the world for you. He died on the cross for your sins and God raised him on the third day. Then confess it with your mouth. Lord, I want to be a part of your family. I want to be your child. I want you to live in me. I want you to lead me. I want you to guide me so that I can succeed in this one and only life that you've given me and do it today. We would love to be a part of your spiritual beginning and your spiritual growth. All you've got to do is text the word JOIN to 804-643-4769 or easier, scan the QR code that's on the lower third of this screen, tap on it, it'll bring you right to our team. I would love to be your pastor and shepherd you along your spiritual journey. We would love to be your church family. We are St. Paul's everywhere. We've got members all over the place that we are attempting to develop and nurture and love and grow by the grace of God in pandemic or not in pandemic. And you are connected to us today on purpose. Are you under pressure? You can still succeed. Because if you get God in the right place, everything else will fall in place. We're going to share some music with you. This is your moment to make a step. God, in the name of Jesus, courage, I pray, from 
my brother, my sister, the will to move in your direction right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Has God been good to you? I know that God has. God has been good to me. I woke up today. I've got another 24 hours in my bank, and so do you. God has provided for us. God's faithfulness is great, incredible, and reliable. God, all my life, C.C. Winan said, God has been faithful. All of my life, he's been so good. 
So with every breath that I am able, I will sing, I will speak, I will shout of the goodness of the Lord. I remind you of that because we're preparing on this first Sunday right here, right now, to worship God through our giving. We worship not only through praying and through singing and through preaching and through fellowship, we worship in giving. Because what you make God first in, God will make you first at. And if it's not good yet, it's because God is not done yet. So I want to invite you now to gather your tithe, your 10%, gather your offering, your best gift as an offering of thanksgiving and sacrifice in light of how good God has been to you. It's easy to give at St. Paul's. All the ways to give are listed on the lower third of this screen. You can write a check, drop it in the mail to the address listed below. You can go to our website at myspbc.org. Click on give at the top of the home page. It will lead you to the right place. Or you can scan the QR code listed on this screen, tap on it, it'll lead you to the right spot. However you give and whatever you give, accept our thanksgiving in advance. And give because you are grateful. Give because you know God has been good to you. All your life, God has been faithful. Let's pray together a prayer of agreement as we give now out of our finance. God, we acknowledge that everything we have comes from you and belongs to you. So it's our privilege, it's our joy, it's our honor to return to you today a portion of what you have given to us. And by returning the portion, we bless the remainder. So bless the gift and the giver now in Jesus' name as we give generously, as we give gratefully, as we give graciously in the name of Jesus. And everybody who agreed with that prayer said, hallelujah, I agree, amen. Let's give unto the Lord.
lift your voice and say, He will. He will. He will supply. supply. Come on, lift it up and say, God will. God will. Supply. supply. Now, only if you believe it, lift your voice and say, He will supply. He one more time all over the church lift your voice real loud and say it God will say God will supply supply come on if you believe it say he will he will he will supply supply come on say God will say God will he will supply supply now lift your voice and say it he will Shout it real loud. Open up your mouth and say it. Come on, say God will. Say God will. Come on and say it. God will. There's no doubt in my mind that he will. I know he will. Say Over 2,000 years ago, God gave us the greatest gift that earth could ever receive, the gift of his only begotten son, who was born, who lived, who died, who was raised again on the third day. As Jesus was preparing to conclude his earthly ministry in the flesh, he gathered his disciples around the table, gave them bread, gave them wine. The Bible says it this way, on the night that he was betrayed, he called his disciples to himself. He took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it. He gave it to them and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup and when he had supped, he gave it to them and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. So we gather now quickly our elements, whatever we have available, that we might celebrate Jesus, that we might remember Jesus, that we might remember our responsibility to love God and our obligation to love each other. He prayed, let us pray. As we gather our elements and prepare to commune, O oh God, we thank you and praise you for your goodness towards us. Bless these elements and all who share them that we might be reminded of our responsibility to love you and of our obligation to love each other. Bless us now, O oh God, as you take us deeper into our spiritual journey. Bless us in every way conceivable as we put our trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. With your elements in hand, 
let us eat and drink together. And we do these things in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Everybody everywhere say, Amen. What a joy it's been to share worship with you on this first Sunday of Black History Month. Don't forget our assignment for the month is to begin to read Black History in a moment where many tragically and erroneously and nefariously would seek to revise history so that it does not include the story of African Americans. I want to challenge you not to let people edit your knowledge, but to take this month to intentionally create a plan so that you can learn about the history of African Americans, which is American history as well. That's our assignment for the entire month. It's been a joy to be with you today. I want to encourage you not to share by clicking the arrow today. Instead, would you take a picture of your communion elements and post it online and just let your friends and family know I was in church today, even though I was at home. Would you download our message application guide and discuss this lesson with them? It will help your whole life. And then finally, will you share our benediction, our closing blessing with us? It's on the screen. Let's read it aloud together. I am because we are. We are because God is. You are not alone. Never, 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 never alone. God is with you and so are we. We love you and there ain't a thing you can do about it except pray fervently, live authentically, love genuinely, and succeed even under pressure. May God bless you real good. From St. Paul's Baptist Church, here's the scoop. The doors of our church are open. We invite you to join us for worship each weekend at 9 a.m. at St. Paul's North, at 10 a.m. online, or at 11.30 a.m. at St. Paul's South. Please review the updated reopening strategy on our website at myspbc.org or by scanning the QR code for details on attending in-person worship. To join us online, download our mobile app or join us at myspbc.tv, Facebook, YouTube, Roku TV, and Apple TV. To join us by phone, call 855-905-7023. To subscribe, please press number one when prompted and you'll receive a call each week when worship and Bible study goes live. Sunday School for Imagination Children and SMB students is now open at St. Paul's North. Students can find a Sunday School group by visiting myspbc.org or by scanning the QR code on the screen. Calling all artists, including visual, graphic, sculptor, etc. We're celebrating black art through the month of February. If you'd like to share your work, please email outreach at myspbc.org by Tuesday, January 31st. Spaces are limited. Romans 8 explodes with the amazing truth that in Christ there is no condemnation and ends with the amazing promise that there is no way that we can be separated from Him. We are free, not just from the bondage of sin, but free to live in the power of the Spirit. We have been adopted into God's family as co-heirs of the kingdom. In Christ, we are more than conquerors. Join us during this Lenten season as our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson, shows us what it means to be more than a conqueror in Christ. This Bridge Bible Study series begins February 23rd. Sometimes the pressure we're under is just too much. Other people's expectations for us, not to mention our own, build up to a point where we just can't deal. So what happens? We shut down, we withdraw, or 
We might self-sabotage to take control of the inevitable disappointment we see lurking just around the corner. Join our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson, as he encourages us to take a step back this year from the pressure cooker lives we often live and look ahead to a year filled with love, hope, joy, and peace instead. During the month of February, we'll celebrate with a special theme each Sunday as we invite you to participate in person or online. February 12th is Negro Spiritual Sunday, come dressed in all black. February 19th is Songs from the Movement Sunday. Let's see your Sunday best. February 26th is Contemporary Gospel Sunday. The attire is Jewels and Jerseys. Our theme for 2023 is every member in a group, every group on a mission. This month, we're celebrating walking your way to a healthier lifestyle and encouraging all groups to participate. If you're not part of a group, we invite you to join a small group at myspbc.info slash find a group. There are just three easy steps. One, join a group. Two, count your steps for one week. And three, submit your total count to your group leader. Groups with the highest total step count and the highest average step count will win a prize. To wrap up the event, come get your steps immediately following Sunday service on February 26th. Bring your walking shoes for this 30-minute walk or get your steps in wherever you are. Walk around campus at St. Paul's North or South at a park or in your neighborhood, at a school or mall, or around your home. Okay, let's have a real talk about blood pressure. Do you monitor yours regularly? It's something everyone with high blood pressure should do, but it's something most people don't know how to do correctly. Checking your blood pressure regularly will help let you know if you have it under control. It will also help you start to understand which factors are putting you at higher risk for stroke and heart attack. Before I get to that though, I just want to stress one thing. If you have high blood pressure, you should talk to your doctor to figure out how frequently you should be checking it at home. For most people, taking your blood pressure twice in the morning and twice in the evening, even just for a week, will help you and your doctor get a better understanding of your blood pressure. For morning readings, it's best to take those before you take your blood pressure medication. It's also very important to avoid exercise, caffeine, or tobacco at least 30 minutes prior to testing since those can affect your levels. Now, let's move on to talk about the proper way to measure your blood pressure at home. Nearly half adults in the U.S. have high blood pressure and are at high risk for stroke and heart attack. So self-measuring is one of the easiest ways to be proactive about our health. Here I have my blood pressure monitoring device. It's easy to use and it helps me get an accurate reading. Be sure to get an automated device with the upper arm cuff. That's the type doctors recommend. The first thing you want to do is find a quiet place to sit where your back is in an upright, stable position. A dining room chair is great. You want to make sure the chair isn't too soft so your body is fully supported. Sit with your feet flat on the floor and don't cross your legs or ankles. If you need to use the bathroom, make sure you go before you do your reading. Next, rest your arm on a flat surface with your palm facing up. Place the blood pressure cuff on your bare upper arm just above your elbow. Your arm should be relaxed and resting so the cuff is at the same height as your heart. Now rest quietly for five minutes before taking the first measurement. Avoid talking while taking your blood pressure measurement. Once your first measurement is completed, write down the blood pressure numbers and pulse that are displayed on the device. Wait one minute and then repeat this process again. As you just saw, it's important to check your two measurements at around the same time each morning and evening. At your next doctor's visit, be sure to share your blood pressure numbers so you can discuss the numbers and so your care plan can be changed if necessary. That's it. Not bad, right? Measuring your blood pressure at home is easy to do and a great way to stay on top of your health. If you have more questions about managing or measuring your blood pressure overall, visit the website. Thank you for your time and attention. This has been The Scoop. 
Thank you for watching this service from the St. Paul's Baptist Church in Richmond, Virginia. Please look through our website, myspbc.org, to learn more about our church, about our vision, and how you can support our mission to empower people to grow into the persons that God created them to be.